Just got a bit of an update here. Uh, a couple of people have been asking about how the system's all going. It's all been up and operating since uh, Christmas time. Um, just haven't been gotten around to actually creating up a video for it. So um, here's the <clears throat> here's the hybrid solar inverter that I'm using. Good Wii, uh ES5048 something something something. Can't remember exactly what it is. Um, so I've got that there. I've got a bit of duct in there coming off my heat pump hot water system just to blow some cold air on it because I figured if I'm going to be creating cold air I might as well just cool off my solar inverter. The internal temps are get pretty hot um, especially when we've been having we've been having a lot of 45 degree days lately so a chance to cool it off is always a good thing. Um, so coming down here, excuse all the mess, I mean I really got to do a bit of a tidy up around here I've just been throwing stuff everywhere. This is uh, basically just working as a junction box here. I've got this this solar invert uh, solar MPPT um, controller here. Uh, goes up to an array on the roof, um, running in a, a relatively low voltage system. It's a 120 volts of um, panels. There's about six six and a bit kilowatts of panels up there, um, and then that just comes down to these little bus points here. I've got my shunt here for my um, BMS, so it knows what's going on. Um, and that's my little display there, it's a Zeva BMS. Other than the BMS there, I've got uh, some cables that come down here, around there, through into the factory one. The network cables you see all bundled up in the corner there, all like make their way over to here. And um, they go into the battery, so there's my battery there. Um, obviously with the cover off at the moment, there's the actual control module of the Zeva. Just sort of like wedged in there with a little washer and a screw. Um, let's see if I can get a bit, a bit of an angle around here of all my cabling. Run across like that. So they all go down to all these little junctions down here, which all then end up coming up into here. So there's all my BMS cell taps um, for measuring all the voltages and everything like that. A couple of temp sensors and solenoid controls and stuff like that from there. Something I should probably add, the um, the experience of trying to get this big old battery here, 450 odd kilos, whatever it weighs, in here, uh, I pulled out that fence panel at the end there and put it in through there, so getting it past that hot water system and all this other stuff, obviously the... Obviously this, this wasn't here at the time. If I got it at the end here. I also had to get it... Uh, across my garden and everything like that, which was just a terrible adventure. It's two systems working in tandem. Uh, I'll hopefully be able to bring up some, bring up the apps. Uh, I'll try and take some screenshots of them and, and follow them up here. But you can see I've got um, 140 odd amps going into the, into the battery at the moment, it's charging, um, flat shut at the moment. I set the battery um, up to just discharge flat out into the grid uh, between around about 8 a.m. and 12 o'clock lunchtime, so the battery can uh, take in a lot of power from the secondary system. Because once the battery comes fully charged, the secondary system just sits there and doesn't actually um, do anything because it can't output into the grid because it's not grid tied. So any any solar um, that it generates, you know, pretty much from about 10 o'clock in the in the morning uh, onwards. You know, once the battery's fully charged on, on summer days, it um, just doesn't do anything. So I thought I might as well just discharge the battery into the grid, um, earn seven cents a kilowatt hour, because that's all, all I get paid, um, and then you know, recharge up from the secondary system. You know, I'm not exactly making massive amounts of profit, but you know, it's better than a kick in the pants. Here we have the SEMS app. This is the Goodwee uh, app for controlling all their grid-tied solar inverters and that. Um, and you see at the moment I'm pulling in around about uh, 4.2 uh, kilowatts of um, solar. Um, got, um, most of it's going into the battery. There's a little bit running my house. I'm at 400 odd watts running running the rest of my house. Um, the battery is almost, full, almost fully charged. It's, well, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon at the moment. And you see here I've got the, um, the solar starting to die off uh, from, the, you know, from the morning. So... On the screen here, I've got, you can see at around about, what is it, 8 a.m., uh, between 8 and 12, I've actually set it up so the battery does full discharge into the grid, um, just to try and flatten it a little bit, because I keep coming to the end of the, 
you know, at the end of the night, and what's this year? I've got like 70, 76% um, after running my house overnight and charging cars and everything like that. So I figured I might as well flatten that battery down a little bit, and just discharge into the grid. So from 8 a.m., I've just got it to go um, full beans out into the grid. Um, and you see the battery actually starts to taper off that purple line there. Um, starts to taper off as the solar builds up because I'm only allowed to export uh, five kilowatts out into the grid uh, maximum. And then we hit lunchtime, and then the battery goes back into charge mode, and away it goes. So today my secondary solar system hasn't actually been turned on. I had it turned off, turned off from yesterday um, when I was messing around. I forgot to actually turn it back on. So we'll actually go back to the previous day there. See here is where I was messing around with the battery. Then here's uh, my wife coming home and plugging cars in and drawing all the power in the world as she normally does. And I will bring up the other app. So if you just give me two secs. So that's my grid tight inverter. Is what I use to monitor the secondary solar system, the non-grid tied system. Um, so I've only just recently turned this system back on. Uh, what's, we're pushing out around about three uh, three kilowatts um, into the battery, just shy of that at the moment. Um, pretty much peaked out of the 60 amp, 60 amp max. So uh, uh, where is it? Here we go. So instead of only just relatively turned on, so I've only pulled 2.6 kilowatt hours. Um, or push 2.6 kilowatt hours into the batch at the moment. Um, the battery is in about 90%, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, or 2.30 in the Arvo. Um, this will be fully charged by the end of the day anyway, between the two solar systems, um, pushing power in. And I can bring up my history on this thing. See, so it pretty much bounces up and down. Most days it's averaging, what, 6, 8, 7, 8... There's a couple of higher ones of 14, 15. I had a really big day the other the other week where it was like 20 kilowatts. I pretty much flattened the battery completely, charging cars uh, overnight, two cars, two EVs overnight, and then also had to. Um, I also flattened the battery because I had it set to maximum discharge because um, I'd messed up one of the settings on it. So it was just it's just putting out everything it could for about six hours. And that's about all I've got really to to show on my system. It's been working beautifully. I mean, we're in um, getting heading towards the end of March now. It's been up since since uh, since Christmas time. Over the Christmas break is when I got it all hooked up and and working, and it's been pretty much working a dream since then. And with that project finished, we move on to the next project, which is a new battery for this. I've got all the cells there ready to go. Just going to build up some battery boxes and get them installed.